Hello and welcome to Education Update. I'm Naish McCauley and joined by my colleague, Paul Holzer. Thank you. Thank you for being here again, everyone. All right, so we are kicking off this Education Update with a true update. Um, coming from Clark School. Yeah. Um, the last time we were with you, we were talking about how um, you know things were still kind of up in the air. But in the past week or so, we received some major news that um, Crec would be the managing partner. That's right. That's right. It was like a last-minute Plan B. I guess uh, the Board of Ed and the kind of interim superintendent, although I think her title was more like special assistant to the board, mm -hmm. Jackie Jacoby. Seem to be working for a week on this with the Commissioner of Education trying to, and CREC, obviously, to try to figure out could there be a plan B to still get them into the Commissioner's Network, hmm. um, which the State Board of Ed needed to approve at their last meeting. So they made it. They did it. They did. And this is so big because um, for most folks out there, CREC is, you know CREC as the, as the school system or the, the, the entity that manages magnet schools mm -hmm. like you never you never really associate it correct with coming into a neighborhood school and and doing their thing doing what correct does yeah this is this is a huge uh, a huge new world a brave new world for correct um, for those who, who don't know there's not many uh, agencies that do school turnaround work right it's most school districts around the country if there's a chronically ill performing school and they're not able to turn it around they usually just shut it down and start over mm -hmm. which can be incredibly disruptive and so communities all across the country are always looking for for kind of turnaround specialists uh, who can come in you know keep all the grades the same keep the same kids in the school keep most of the teachers and say all right guys we're going to turn this around from the inside out right mm -hmm. and it might take three to five years or more but we're going to do this and there's only like, you know, five to 10 folks in the country who do that work. And, you know, Friendship was one of like four that really do does it outside their state, which is why I think the state was really pushing to, you know, really look at Friendship, guys, because there's not that many people who do this. So for Crec to get into this game to say, you know, we've, we, we know how to run magnet schools, right? Um, now let's get into this new world of partnering with a district to kind of manage a, a, a struggling school to try to turn it around is a big deal. I mean, I, you know, and, and no one knows for sure whether Crec has the expertise to do this. Um, but they've been running successful magnet schools and they've got a, they have a high standard of excellence, it seems. So um, it could be a game changer for Hartford because if they're able to really add value, you know, as a partner, as a managing partner to help manage a school in Hartford, You've got to think that you know people like things done locally, and maybe maybe they could be helpful in other schools. But you know, time's going to tell. I mean, we shouldn't even be talking about whether or not this is going to work until two or three years from now. So. Well, you know, Paul, everyone has a lot of questions. I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that we at Chief Hartford have the answers, but you know, everyone wants to know some really basic things, though. Like, so does this mean it, it becomes a magnet school? Does it stay a neighborhood school? Right. You know, like, so where, I mean, the board has to answer, I'm, I'm, you know, s some of those questions. questions. Yeah. And, you know, so. and they've answered some of them, right? So I think, you know, at the last meeting, and they reiterated the fact that. You know, this is not going to be a magnet school. No way, no how. The community does not want that. Right? Mm -hmm. Kids are not getting displaced. Right? It is. It has a community school model. Right? It's partnership with um, village. the village. Right? That's staying there. Right? So some of those like really important fundamental pieces are staying there. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of other changes like length of the school day, um, which teachers will be there. Right, other things related to working conditions. I don't know because mm -hmm. the fact is, is that a lot of that stuff was spelled out in uh, in in their original plan. Um, but what the state board approved, you know, other other uh, turnaround schools, other commissioners network schools had full on plans that the state board of ed had reviewed. What was submitted to the state board of ed was just the partnership with CREC. So they're still, I mean, and this all happened last minute, right? That's so understandably, CREC right. and HPS are still figuring out. They're going to be negotiating probably for the next few weeks. What is gonna what that plan is gonna look like, you know? So I don't know. I mean, the teachers at at Clark must be thinking like, so what does this mean for me? Right. You know, like what 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 am I gonna have to sign up for um, if I want to stay at this school? Because that's usually how the commissioners network schools work. Right. You know, that you, you're kind of they're asking all teachers to recommit to two or three years under new working conditions, and not everyone will. Mm. So um, a lot of a lot of uncertainty, but 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 folks in the community should know that that this is a turnaround. This is not a magnetization. This is right. this is a, a school stays the same. You know the kids are not being displaced. 
as far as I know, the, even the grade configuration is, is going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. So unless we hear differently, and obviously if we do, we'll report out on it. But um, we'll see. I mean, a lot to be figured out in the next month. And then Craig will have the summer basically to, to you know hire and if they're if they're open positions and and train and do whatever it is that Craig Craig does I yeah. mean um, you know running a magnet school is a lot different than running a, a neighborhood school especially with the high specialized population that, that Clark has and that specialized program that they have there so mm -hmm. and I've heard too that that specialized program is not moving that that's a part of the Clark school and people move there to, to have their kids in that in that program so right. So this is what we know a lot of, that we don't, but mm -hmm. at least um, at least folks should should feel good that, that Clark is going to get additional resources this year. They don't have to wait another year, right? And that they've got a local player in Creck who's partnering with the district to really try to help turn the turn the school around. So I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, how I feel anyway. Right, 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 right. No, I think that's 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 an accurate statement. Uh, so we'll see. You'll see. And I'm, I'm sure we'll learn more uh, before the school year's out. And so uh, we'll definitely keep you updated as uh, new developments come on board with what's happening there. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, another big, um, big news in education is um, if you've ever heard of this term blended learning, you know, you will <laughs> if we have anything to do about That's it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have stepped into this brave new world also. Uh, well, not exactly new, but brave. Yeah. Uh, blended learning. And it's this, it's a new model, new method of teaching, right? Teaching and learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would, I would, I would say, you know, I always like to say personalized blended learning because okay. people think blended and, and the term means, you know, there's a use of technology in the classroom, but not mm -hmm. just like, oh, kids have access to computers that, that no, a lot of the learning happens with technology and your teacher there. Mm -hmm. um, but I always call it personalized blended learning because it's meant to be much more student centered. Right. And so why do we care? Why does the Chief Hartford care about this? Well, um, I think, you know, you're, you're excited when you mention it. And I think everyone should be because uh, it has a chance to really revolutionize learning. I mean, I think a lot, a lot of what folks complain about about school now is based on what school was and what school still is, which right. is, you know, most kids sitting in a classroom learning the same exact thing at the same exact time. Some kids struggling, some kids advancing and bored. Um, most kids in the middle somewhere, you know, trying to grasp it. And, um, you know, and, and everyone just forced to kind of learn what from one one spigot, you know, yeah. from one faucet and uh, personalized blended learning is about flipping all of that on its head. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of it from creating uh, ways for kids to advance at their own pace. Right. So that they can go way ahead if they need to kids to utilize things uh, on the Internet and technology that, you know, our parents get so afraid about, but but in a great way, right. use incredible educational tools like audio and video, allow them to explore things that they're interested in to learn certain units, certain content. Um, and it also, you know, divides it divides a lot of students up into stations, you know, which a lot of teachers do anyway. Mm -hmm. But this can go like really deep. I mean, really deep saying, OK, now you guys are working on it from you're working on the unit from this side. You guys are doing it from this side. You guys got it over here on this side. Right. You know, using multimedia. I mean, it's just it's a it's an incredible experience to see. We've we've had our our, our lead writer tracking this and writing some stories about it in our weekly newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, it's hot, and Hartford is is leading the way in yeah. Connecticut. So, so um, Hartford Public Schools have started uh, piloting blended learning at two schools at Buckley and uh, Pathways. Yeah, and so they recently reported out on how that has been going. And, uh, you know, we're planning to do a few more community forums to uh, give the community and other interested parties uh, opportunity to come in and, and actually see how blended learning works and hear more about it. So, yeah, it's going to be really important to come out. Um, we're going to try to push as much public understanding of what personalized blended learning is as possible, you know, because I think if people know about it, um, you know, they'll they'll think of education differently. They'll yeah. think of their kids being able to get much more excited about what they're learning, mm -hmm. making it much more relevant based on their own interests. So um, it could be great. And also it has the power to change, change the conversation even down the line when people That's start right. thinking about how fast you can get a high school diploma. Right. Right. You know, or how fast you can get college credit, because if you're advancing at your own pace, I mean, really, this is a game changer. So it, it really is. And we're going to have, I think, a, we have no date yet for our forum. Right. right. But, but it's coming up We've probably first week of June. And we'll make sure that everyone hears about it. Mm -hmm. Come out and learn as much as you can. Awesome. So lastly, we are in um, 
uh, right on the, the, the heels of this Magnet School Conference. We've yeah. been talking about it for a couple of weeks, but we're here. Um, it kicks off on Thursday, May 15th, and uh, for the first time, this is fascinating because this is the 32nd annual Magnet Schools of America Conference, and this is the first time that they've included a parent track. Yeah. So Saturday is dedicated to parent workshops. So if you are a Magnet School parent, um, or a non-magnet school parent, you are invited to come out and hear more about uh, different models, different approaches, um, how you can get involved and make your magnet school even greater. You know, it's just exciting. Achieve Hartford is going to be there. <laughs> yeah, and you know, our, uh, our, our, our workshop that we're doing on Saturday isn't even that, you know, super addressed at parents. It's more mm -hmm. at school districts that work with parents and how mm -hmm. they can do a better job engaging parents. Um, but come to that come come to all the the sessions on saturday there's actually a session that's competing with ours um that trinity's doing and if you're a parent i would say go to that one because that that's going to look at data that uh, trinity is putting out soon on uh on how well school choice is working for for those applying to magnet schools you know who's mm, who's applying to those chooses. schools which geographies uh, which families demographics their kids you know um, so we're, we're trying to work with Trinity to push out a lot more research to find out, you know, how well is this all working and who's who's taking advantage of it? Who's really participating? So mm. that that's just one set. I mean, there's a there's been a lot of great sessions on Saturday and parents can go for free, right? Uh, magnet school parents definitely can go for free. Um, so if you are a parent um, of a magnet school child, please talk to your principal and find out more information about how um, you can go on Saturday. Are you going for free? I am going for free. And you're at Kinsella, right? I'm okay. at Kinsella, right, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, if if not, it is $75, um, which in comparison to the actual cost of the conference is it's quite a deal. <laughs> it's like 10% of the cost, I know. Yeah. It's crazy. So, um, but definitely, if you if you, uh, talk to your school principal to find out yeah. more about it. And there's it. sessions on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so. Yeah. I think uh, if you can go to as much of it as you can, it should be pretty good. Yeah, uh, downtown Marriott, so conveniently located. So. And I'll mention that I think I think there's something like 1,400, 1,500 people already registered for this conference. It's the first time it's in Hartford, I believe, mm -hmm. um, or at least first time in a while that it's come to Hartford. And uh, usually there's about 750 people registered for this every year. So some about it being in Hartford, maybe something about, about it having a parent track this year. But double the attendance of normal. And this is gonna this is gonna be an economic driver for the city over the weekend. This is huge. And I don't know, I, I, I don't know if this is so, but it could have something to do with the Chef V O'Neill and how, you know, Chef just has impacted Hartford in such a huge way. I'm sure that has rippled throughout the country, this whole idea of um, desegregation in this particular particular way, but I don't know. That's great. So, well yeah. we hope to see folks out come to our session and uh, and uh, we're also going to be releasing pretty soon a report on magnet schools uh, from 2007 to 2013. Um, magnet schools run by Hartford. How have the kids in magnet schools done those who are from the sub suburbs versus Hartford resident kids? You know, is there an achievement gap within the school? Um, how have these, how has the achievement gap been able to close over time or not mm. in, in given magnet schools that Hartford Public Schools has run? So. So yeah, very interesting. I mean, people have been, people, I feel like people have been asking us for that data for, forever. So yeah. the school district was kind enough to give us that in the fall and we've been looking at it all spring. So. Hmm. That's big, Paul, because um, that potentially is going to have people asking a very set of different questions going forward. And um, we all have to then reflect on, you know, <laughs> well, this is just, it's what the chef, data says. Chef in general is one of those things where, you know, you, know, you might love your magnet school, but not necessarily feel that great about about you know having suburban kids you know in the school, or, or maybe you feel great about it because it's more of a global education. But I'm thinking this report can, is going to cause some waves because I think a lot of people you know are going to want to say, well, why can't we just see that data every year? You know, I don't necessarily care if I'm a Harvard parent like how the suburban kids are doing in that school. I just want to know about the Harvard kids. Yeah. Don't tell me that's a great school if. You know, I want to know how the Harvard kids are doing. Exactly. So, but you know, those kids come to Harvard. Those are those are Harvard Public School kids. Right. Right. So, you know, it's it's all about being inclusive. So, mm. anyway, Chef always says controversies on. Yeah, I know, you know. and that's that's coming. But we'll talk. We'll, yeah, we need to do a forum on that at some point. Yeah. yeah. Just, just Chef in general. That's it. That's it. So, um, you know, May uh, 15th through the 18th, Magnet Schools of America will be here downtown Marriott. Definitely, you want to come out and and. and 
check that out and uh, then look look out for the blended learning um, community forums too we really encourage you to come out and, and check those out so um, until next time Paul thanks so much Nisha. all right see you there. Thank you.